This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship this weekend. Obviously, it's a little bit different with myself and Marshall Thompson, our music director, needing to be in quarantine. Everything is going to be online. But we decided to take this opportunity um, to incorporate some different voices of folks that are at home. So you're not just going to see me and Marshall ping-ponging back and forth with worship. You also see some of our members who are doing the prayers and readings and children's sermons uh, and helping to have a variety of voices from across the congregation helping to lead worship this morning. So we encourage you to stay, to sing, to pray with us. If you would like to give your offering this week, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can give online, of course, through our website, through our app. Some of you already do that. If you have set up recurring giving, wonderful. Now's a great time to try that out if you want. Or you can uh, drop your offerings off at the church um, during the week when the office is open, or you, of course, can always mail those into the church at 520 North Holland Street in Belleville, Texas. Also, for announcements, we are going to have the drive through baked potato uh, uh, event on Sunday from 11 to 2. So if you bought tickets for that, that is still on. Um, because it's pretty much a social distance built-in event and everyone's already wearing masks and everything, we thought it was safe to continue with that. So just come around the back of the church. There'll be signs. There'll be people directing you. You can pick up your meal or meals, however many you bought, and go on home and enjoy that meal. Thank you to everyone who has supported the youth group, the LYO mission trip group with that. I think they've sold just over 300 tickets, so uh, raised a good chunk of change for their trip that's coming up in the summer. Other than that, for announcements, I don't have a whole lot. Of course, Lent is coming. We're going to be doing a new sermon series called You're Not the Boss of Me, talking about how emotions uh, can control our lives. We'll be having our midweek services, um, but exactly what all of that looks like is kind of dependent on the next couple weeks. Um, we will be having Ash Wednesday services. We're going to do a drive-through Ash Wednesday service from noon to one on Ash Wednesday. And then we'll have our evening service as well. I think we have a good, safe way uh, to give people ashes and give them communion through the drive-through portion. So whether you're being extremely cautious with COVID, and I certainly understand that right now, uh, or whether you want to come in person, there'll be options available for you come Ash Wednesday. But for now, let us begin our time of worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God, first in silent prayer. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. And let us all say together, Amen. Will you come and follow me if 
fire but call your Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you accept us into your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Since we're separated, I encourage you to share the peace with those you might be watching this with in your household. But also, if you're watching on either Facebook or YouTube, there is a live comment section underneath. You can type in peace be with you and share it there across the ether. Or if you want to get really inventive and out there, you can text someone and say, hey, I want the peace of God to be with you. And it may weird them out, but then you can explain to them, hey, why do we share the peace with each other? Why am I wishing peace on your life? And you can have a lovely conversation with them. But however you want to do it, the peace of God be with you. Please share that peace with others. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to, the, to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be, will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. The word of the Lord. Hello there. How are you guys doing? So for today's children's sermon, I have a question for you guys. Anyone that is watching this, raise your hand if you like whipped cream. I definitely have to raise my hand. I love whipped cream, especially with some pumpkin pie. But raise your hand if you like pumpkin pie. Mm, sort of. It's good. It tastes good. But man, on Thanksgiving, I can be stuffed as a turkey. And you put pumpkin pie in front of me with some whipped cream. Or better yet, a lot of whipped cream with just a little bit of pumpkin pie. And man, I will make room in my stomach. I will gobble that right up. In today's gospel that Pastor Bell is reading, 
he talks about these men that uh, Jesus asks if they will follow him. Their names are Andrew, Peter, James, and John. And you see, they were fishing. And when Jesus came to ask them if they would follow him, they dropped what they were doing and they did. They followed Jesus and became his disciples, some of his disciples. So my next question to you guys is why? Why would they do that? So like with that pumpkin pie, the whipped cream just made it taste so much better. Jesus is sort of like that with God. Jesus is really, really good at helping us to see God's awesomeness. And Jesus makes it easy to know, well, through Jesus, he makes it easy for us to know how to share God's awesomeness. And in turn, that helps others when we share God's word. And in the Bible, or through Sunday school, or Mad Club, or Confirmation, or LYO, all those things that we offer here at the church that you might come to, um, we learn how we can receive God's love ourselves through Jesus' teachings. So this Jesus guy is pretty, pretty popular and pretty important. It changes our minds. It changes lots of people's minds in this story of how God is perceived. All right, let, let us fold our hands and we're going to say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who shares your awesomeness with others. Please help us to receive your awesome love so that we can share it with others, just like Jesus did. Thank you and amen. Guys, I hope you are having a great weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I want to give a quick reminder to everybody to pick up their baked potato from the church on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the back. Also, we have this really cool thing going called a noisy offering for Super Bowl of Sunday. And soup as in soup in. See, Super Bowl. This is a really great organization and program that this church has worked with for a really long time. And we are asking for change. Oops, I dropped some. I'll pick it up later. <laughs> our noisy offering. It gets really noisy with it. But feel free to put any kind of monetary donation in these things that we have set up throughout the church after the uh, this weekend. Um till Super Bowl Sunday. And we have this really fun thing going in the church as well to where I have a uh, display of all the teams that are actually playing in the Super Bowl. Um, and we're plucking one away each week um, as they uh, get out of the Super Bowl or out of the running for the Super Bowl. Sorry, not a real big um, football. But anyway, this is fun. We have it throughout the church. It's really noisy, kind of cool. And all the proceeds are going to go to feeding people around America. Hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend. See you later. Bye bye. The gospel reading for today is from the first chapter of Mark. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats mending the nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A short explanation before we go into the sermon. I recorded this sermon on Wednesday out at the retreat center, far away from anyone else and, and really by myself, before uh, we knew that 
that Marshall was going to have to be isolated and before we knew that Sarah had, had contracted COVID as well. Uh, and so I reference of wanting to be there in the sanctuary just to give you an idea of what's going on there. But the rest of the sermon works really well and I like the location. Um, so I hope that it still works and resonates with you all. Good morning. It's a shame not to be able to be with you this morning to deliver this sermon in person, but as you've probably heard through the grapevine or through social media or email, uh, my wife has been diagnosed with COVID, and so I and the kids need to quarantine with her for this week, uh, and uh, hopefully next week we'll be able to get back to normal, uh, but we'll wait and see. And so first, let me say thank you to everyone who has sent their prayers and well wishes to Angela. Um, she's doing pretty well. Uh, it's Wednesday the 20th as I'm recording this, and uh, she still can't smell or taste anything, uh, but uh, she isn't having any trouble breathing. She's not having any of those serious symptoms, uh, just feels really run down most of the time. So we appreciate your ongoing prayers, uh, and hopefully we'll be back to normal soon. Thank you also to the people who have brought by food and snacks. They're much appreciated by myself and the kids. I decided that since I can't be there in person and since we are talking about this story from Matthew where Jesus is calling these fishermen to come and follow him and to fish for people that I would come to our lakeside to record the sermon. If I can't be in person, I might as well be somewhere fun. Now, let me assure you that all safety precautions have been taken. I am here completely by myself. There is no one else here uh, within 100 yards of me at least. And um, I didn't touch anything on the way in. I haven't been by the Mavis building and I I've wiped down the lock as I come in and out of the Faith Center. So I am really taking every precaution here. But as we talk about coming down or Jesus coming down to the lakeshore to talk with these men, I thought we'd come to our own lakeshore. This story is one of the more well-known ones in the calling of the disciples. In fact, it becomes a defining one of Jesus calling the fishermen to come and I will make you fish for people. He, called these, he calls these men who have plied the shores of a lake all their life, a lake much bigger than our own, to catch fish for their families and to sell in order to make a living. These are probably not very wealthy men. They are laborers, but they get by. It's something they know and that they are skilled and good at, going out in the evening and fishing, repairing their nets by day, bringing in the catch and learning how to sell it in the market so that they can survive and have their daily bread. And yet along comes Jesus and he says to them, come and follow me. And as Mark says, immediately they drop their nets and they go and follow him. They turn away from everything that they know in order to follow this man who, at least according to scripture, they don't know up until this moment. Now, perhaps there was a little more conversation than what's shared with us in scripture. Perhaps there was a little more knowledge of who Jesus was before he came to them personally Yet what we have in this scripture is a story of repentance. You see, immediately before this story, we hear that after John died, Jesus goes around the countryside and says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And what repentance is, quite literally, is turning around. Turning around and living differently. Obviously, turning around and living differently from the way in which you've been sinning. But for these men, it's turning around and living differently from the life that they have known before. And so we hear the word of repentance preached. And then we see the act of repentance lived out in the persons of the disciples, in these faithful men. It's an immense change and upheaval because never again will they be simple fishermen going along the lakeshore. Never again will they be the same people to their friends and family. Never again will their life be the same. In fact, these 12 apostles and so many other followers of Jesus will go out across the known world and will never see home again. And one of the hymns that I really enjoy called You Have Gone Down to the Lakeshore. It's the story of Jesus coming to the lakeshore and calling these disciples to follow him. And the one line that, that always sticks in my mind is the singer, the author, whoever you want to say, saying to Jesus, but with you, I will fish other seas. 
That's what the disciples say here in the story. But with you, Jesus, I will go and I will fish other seas. I will fish in a new way and in a new place. We live in the midst of a time of upheaval and change. I believe 2021 is going to be one of the biggest years of change for business, for society, for our churches. I think because of what happened in 2020, what's taken place over the last 10 months or so, we will see a lot of churches that will merge and close down, not St. John, but a lot of other churches that were right on the edge between independence and survival and needing something different. We will see old ministries die away and re be reborn as something new. We will see a lot of people across professions changing their job and their location as they have a realignment of what's most important to them and where they want to live and where they want to spend their life. We'll also see that change because businesses are deciding across multiple fields that, you know what, it's actually a lot easier and a whole lot cheaper to have people work from home if that's what they want to do. I mean, we all know what Zoom is like now, so why not take advantage of that and save on some rent and some space? So a whole lot of things are going to be changing over this next year. We're going to see it here in Belleville. We're going to see it across the country and across the world. And some of that change is going to be worrisome for sure. It always is. But I think a lot of that change can be seen as a positive, depending on how we look at it and who we see as the center of that change. When we see all these changes in our communities and in our churches, in our lives, might we look at it as God or as Jesus calling us to come and fish other seas with him? As our professions change and evolve, might we see that as a way in which God is calling us to live differently and to do our work differently in a new place for the betterment of our community and our families and those around us? Might we see that the change and upheaval which is coming is not all bad because some of it is an act of repentance? Not an act of repentance of because we have sinned so much, although, you know, we're all sinful creatures. But an act of repentance in the sense of being turned around to live differently. Like the sons of Dib Dib Zebedee, like Peter the Rock, we are called to repent, to live in a different way for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of Jesus. We're called to worship differently. We're called to speak differently. We're called to live differently. We're called to work differently. And maybe we're called to do all that for the glory of God. We've seen this before. We've seen it in the whole, our, the, our history of our own congregation. We were a congregation here in Belleville that was founded for the German community and that for decades spoke German in worship and in the minutes of the church and in all the meetings. And then God called us to fish other seas and we became an English speaking congregation. We were a congregation in one place, gathering weekly in our sanctuary for worship, and then God called us to fish other seas, and we became an online church as well as an in-person church. So if God has called us to times of repentance, times of turning around before, might not he do the same thing again? I love this place I love the quiet and the peace and the beauty that you can find here in our retreat center. I'm very thankful for the privilege that I've had as a pastor of getting to use this um, for events and for our church, but, but for my own personal reflection at times. There is something here in the peace and the quiet that helps me to find clarity, that helps me to gain a vision of what to do next that just helps me to find peace in the midst of all my tumultuous thoughts. Maybe in the midst of our own turmoil, in the midst of all this change, we can find that moment of peace and clarity for ourselves. And maybe, just maybe, to go back to our gospel story, that it was in the peace of that morning 
as these men had brought in another night's catch because they fished at night and brought it in at dawn. Maybe in the quiet of that morning, they had their own moment of epiphany. That's the season we're in, after all. A moment of clarity, a moment of revelation that gave them a new understanding and a new vision of what their life was going to be. And so that when Jesus comes along and says, come and follow me and I will have you fish for other people, they go, yeah, okay. And they drop their nets and they go. I pray that we have those moments of clarity in this year to come and in the years to come after it because change is coming. It always is. God is constantly calling his people to new ventures, to new seas, to new types of fishing for people. And when we are able to take a moment and see where God is at work, then we can see that change and turmoil, not as an inconvenience, not as something frightening and terrifying, but as God calling us to go and fish other seas with him. So we come to the lake shore once again. We come to this place of quiet and peace, whether it's literally here or there in the sanctuary or wherever you find yourself watching this. And we pray for clarity and we pray for vision and we pray for a sense of repentance that we might live differently, that we might be turned in the way in which God wants us to go. And that like James and John and Peter and all the rest of the disciples, we might have the courage and the faithfulness to go and fish other seas with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered together as God's people, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love for skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, for those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, and all who await relief, especially Angela, Mark, Joy, Gary, Bobby, Gail, Bonnie, Lori, Chris, Trent, Dalton, Shelby, William, Gertie, Jeanette, Kathy, Avi Sue, Angie, Justin, Bethany, David, Emily, Misty, Greg, and those we name aloud are in our hearts. We pray also for all members who are homebound and residing in the nursing homes, our first responders and military personnel serving around the world. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations that God inspire all people. For St. John and our community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. In thanksgiving for our ancestors whose lives serve as an example of gospel, of gospel living, we invite the prayers of the community. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. For our offering today, again, um, obviously we're not having in-person worship. You can give online through our website. Uh, there is a giving link there, or you can go through our church app. There's a way to give that way as well. Or if you would like to drop your offering off at the envelope, our office staff should still be there on Monday, God willing. Um, or, of course, you can always mail your offering into the church um, at the church address, 520 North Holland Street there in Belleville, and we can receive it that way. Or you can wait till next week. Hopefully we'll be back uh, in normal times then. But let us continue with an offering of music from our wonderful music director, Marshall. I've been born again 
to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer Please pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. We close with one of my favorite hymns, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
shadow be Thank you for joining us online for this unique uh, COVID-inspired worship. Uh, we appreciate you all being flexible and being willing to roll with this. Uh, this is not at all what we had planned last Monday or last Sunday, but uh, God, uh, you know, throws curveballs at us and we, we just go with it as life continues on. But go in peace and be the light of Christ to one another. Thanks be to God.